Gigantic moves happened today like Tesla major earnings. We're going to go over that. The next big plays and buys on Tesla that I want to be doing now that we have that earnings move. And also we did play earnings and also big moves that could be happening tomorrow as well. So we got to go over a lot of the sectors like NVIDIA, the AI sectors as well. We have big moves on the upside and actually on the downside too. Y'all see Funware. Funware crashed back down like crazy. But that's actually what you want to see if you want to get shares because you don't chase the upside. Okay. We also got to go over DJT as well that stuck hit this uh, smaller support we're going to go over the bigger names as well like apple meta google amazon we're also going to go over oil gold bitcoin the crypto stocks also so just make sure you stay tuned buckle up this be a very big video and also somewhere in the video there's some big call options that i want to do on certain stocks and there's a point in time that i will do them so make sure you listen to that as well but Let's go ahead and kick it off with the AI sector and let's go ahead and go over to Nvidia first then we'll go over all the other ones. So Nvidia 138.30 was support that I gave y'all. It literally hit support perfect today. Two days in a row is pretty much hit that support. Support hit here and support almost hit perfect there again and it kind of pushed Nvidia back up. So that's telling us Nvidia might not want to drop just yet. Now what's the most important thing about the support level at 138.30? If it starts breaking that, that's showing us that Nvidia wants to start dropping. So that means I will stop looking for upside plays. Right now, the last, the next thing I'm looking out for is if Nvidia starts breaking this resistance level, we do have a resistance level now, right around 143.20, then I'll go back to playing all-time highs on Nvidia. So now you have two levels to kind of look out for to give us that direction. If we break 144. 143.20. I'm playing like scalping options. It'll probably five, 10 minutes will make about 20%. Um, I'll be looking to play that. If it breaks 143, I'll be looking to play that to all time highs on NVIDIA. Or if we break 138.30, then I'll actually be looking for NVIDIA to go down to about 136. So those are kind of the ranges that I'm kind of looking out for right now. And these are the two major levels I'm looking at to let me know what direction NVIDIA wants to go. And I'll just play it in that direction for easy profit. So that's how I'm looking at NVIDIA. Long-term shares, we already have long-term shares. We're already up. I haven't sold any, but I haven't bought any either. Our average is down here around 110. This is when we bought them, so we are up. And then we've been scalping NVIDIA almost every day. So we're pretty much chilling. I didn't play NVIDIA today, but tomorrow, if it breaks one of these levels, then that's how I'm looking to buy NVIDIA tomorrow, okay? So these levels are very important that I'm looking out for. AMD, softer. Remember I told y'all I want that push up, hit resistance, and then for it to fall back down? That's exactly what we got. Price came down right price dropped came down to support returned and now we're getting selling pressure off that return so that might be loading up for some put options on nvidia stock i am I'm, i mean amd stock i am looking forward to break 149.70 and go down to about the 145s i'm looking for a nice swing put option to go down there i might even buy that tomorrow so i'm looking for amd to go down to 145 other than that i'm really not looking to buy any shares or any more call options or anything like that we do i do want it to go to around 130 that's why I'm looking for bigger call up, um, bigger shares, my big shares, because I do want to start a long term position on it. But I just don't want to start it right here. You also want to be watching about 156.85 just in case AMD wants to push up higher. If it breaks that, then that's showing signs that it wants to go higher. We'll probably play the shorter term upside. But for now, I'm assuming I'll probably get swing puts tomorrow. 50-50 if I'll get them tomorrow or maybe Monday. And then I'm looking for support to break at 149.70. Then I'm looking for AMD to go down to about 145, and that's how I kind of see it for now. ABGL hit support today pretty perfect, 169.80. If we go down to the five-minute chart, you'll see that. Look at that beautiful support hit there, and it pretty much just stalled out after that support hit perfect. This is why I say make sure you guys smash that like button. Let's get 300 likes within eight hours. Y'all killed it yesterday. I appreciate y'all. Let's see if we can do it again. Comment down those stocks that you guys want me to go on tomorrow's video. Y'all know I read every comment, and I respond to them. And if they have analysts, I'll add it in here of what I see. And at the end of the video, We'll add uh, those comments at the end of the stocks that y'all commented as well. We got a lot of sectors to go over. So just buckle up and pay attention. So AVGO hit support. Now, what am I looking out for AVGO is I'm looking for AVGO to go down to about 160. And I'm basically looking for put options. Um, I'm trying to see it needs to break the support first for it to turn bearish. Right now, it's technically still bullish and it hit all time highs literally like two weeks ago. So it needs to break the support first. And then I'll look for potential plays for it to go down to 160 and even lower. But breaking that support would be a strong sign that it wants to go down to 160. So I'm just watching 169.80. 
for now. Um, Dell is pretty much a no man's land. There's not much I want to do with Dell. It has a very wide range, 128.40 and 115.25 support down here. And the 128.40 is resistance. It needs to break one of those to let me know where Dell wants to go. And whichever one it breaks, I'll play it. So if it breaks the resistance, I'll play upside. If it breaks the support, I'll play the downside. But it hasn't broke either. So right now I'm just being patient and I'm pretty much just waiting for it. Um, Intel is pretty stalled as well. It's kind of like Dell. It has a support at 2110 and it has a resistance at 2335. Whichever one it breaks will kind of let us know where Intel wants to go. We already played Intel, by the way. I played Intel in swings. We played this swing here. We took all our profits and I'm looking to play it again because if you look at Intel, Intel is usually a swing type of mover, um, especially when it starts going up. So it has a swing here, comes down. Swing here, goes down. Swing here, little down, swing again. Then you have these swings down, these swings down. So I play it usually in swings. And then when I feel like it's going to have a bigger motion like this, then I'll do like a bigger play on it. But for now, I'm just playing the swings on Intel. And we already played the first one. So I am looking for that second swing. But it, ha it would have to break out of one of these levels to really get some directional type movement that might make it a little bit easier to try to play Intel. SMCI is still stalled. It has not done much. Um, I would say you do have a smaller resistance level at about 4760. So you can watch that. 4760. 4760 on SMCI. If that breaks, it's really not showing much, but it's just a resistance. Maybe that might want to push a little higher, 49s, maybe 50s. But I would say watch that. So far, it keeps bouncing off this support at about 4510, and we really don't have any directional SMCI, and they have earnings next week on Tuesday. So just be mindful of that. Their earnings could affect SMCI. Hopefully it does, because then hopefully we'll get some type of direction on SMCI, and then I can know how to play it accordingly. But for right now, it's just stuck. So watch support 4510, resistance 4760, smaller resistance, by the way. So let's make it a little bit smaller. And that's pretty much SCI. I don't want to buy in this range because it just kind of looks heavy until it starts breaking out those resistance areas. Then it'll get a little bit better. So watch out for that on the SMCI type of front. Microsoft. Microsoft had a big down day yesterday and had a little pull down today as well. Now we did play it. Also, we played some earnings. I'll go over that in a minute. Y'all can see Tesla earnings, 400% gains. And we also played UPS earnings, over 128% gains. But we also played Microsoft today for put options for about 14% gain. I told them exactly where I wanted it. I told them I, th I want the contract right around 80. It hit 80. I took my profits and I never looked back. So that was the only play I did today besides the earnings plays was this Microsoft put option play. That's what I'm saying. Make sure you guys join right now while the Halloween sale is live. It's like over 20% off. You got the elite, the elite year and lifetime memberships. Lifetime comes with personal training, by the way. So it's the best bang for your buck. And then personal training down here by itself as well. You can do monthly with personal training, lifetime, or early year. But any questions, email me, willnowl at 77.com. Seven, seven prices do go up in about five days. So make sure you take advantage of this because once the prices go up, it's going to be past what they came from. So this is going to be over 850. This is going to be over 85 and so forth. So make sure you enjoy that discount while you got it. It. But yeah, that's what we did on Microsoft. Pretty stalled. It was nothing else to do on Microsoft. I even might look to trade Microsoft to the same play we did today. I might even look for that same play tomorrow. So it might be a double dip of the same play tomorrow. So just to give you a hint. So you got Apple and Microsoft potential scouts. I'm looking out for to tomorrow. And then Apple hit support today around 228. If we take this white line off, you'll kind of see it a little bit. Well, let's go to a five minute chart. So support was 228.45 on Apple stock. Look at that beautiful support hit. This is why you should be smashing the like button, subscribing if you are new. I appreciate y'all watching. Look at that beautiful, it's all like perfect support hit, held price, and a little push up off that. Okay, so that was a beautiful support hit. It is the same support for Apple again at 228.20. Now, what's important about this is if we break 228.45. Then that's showing signs that Apple actually wants to go down to about the 227s. And that's like a put option play for me that I'm looking out for. I'm kind of just waiting to see when it wants to do that. They do have earnings next week, which is Thursday. A lot of big names come out next week, like Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft. They're all next week. So be mindful of that. But 228.45 is what I'm looking out for, a potential put option play, like a scalp, like in and out that same day. That's why this support level is pretty big. OK, but other than that, there's no big shares or big call options I want to do on Apple right now, not in the range that it's in. Tesla. So Tesla, major, major push off earnings. I told y'all after this drop, it's either going to go up, down, or stall out, right? And it was stalling out. So I pretty much said, just wait for earnings. Wait for earnings, wait for earnings, wait for earnings. I'm going to play earnings. And then after that, depending on what it does from earnings, it'll set up a nice play. 
So we did play earnings. Earnings here, we sold all of our Tesla earnings play for 400% gains. We also played UPS earnings, which was over 128% gains. You can see a team member here made about $1,000. If you go to the profit section, you'll see it down here. Another $1,000. One team member made $20,000 off them. And the whole team pretty much ate off that. So that was a beautiful, beautiful play on Tesla. That's why I told y'all. That's what I'm waiting out for is earnings. So that was a pretty easy play, right? This is why I say make sure you join the team. Now, I'm, I am not a earnings player by any means. I'm a scalper. I scalp the market every day, every morning. That's what I am, right? I like easy profit, fast profit. I'm done for the day. But if the earnings kind of make sense, then we play them. So Tesla bang, Tesla is up very high. Also, our long-term shares are close to 30% up also. So we are pretty much chilling right now on Tesla. Remember the last time I told y'all, Tesla has a move. You want to retrace and then you want the bigger move in this same direction. So what would be optimal? So let's take everything off of Tesla right now. What would be optimal is a retracement and then the secondary move. That is what we want. That would be the most ideal for Tesla to kind of do. So for now, I'm going to put support right around 253 even. 253 even is your support right now on Tesla. So in the range that is in now, we already did the big earnings play. We already have the long-term shares. I don't want to buy any more long-term shares in this range. I'm actually looking for bigger call options, which stay tuned. I'll let y'all know when I want to do that. It's pretty much going to be after the elections, right? Probably the week after elections. I'm going to do a lot of big call option plays, meaning I'm going to do leaps. Tesla is one of them. Nike's also one of them. Nike's finally dropping, so I'm going to be buying Nike more soon and also a big call option on Nike. And also Disney is going to have a big call option and more shares of this as well. Those are already three that I talked about. I'll talk about more sporadically in the video, so you just got to stay tuned. But all these are going to be bought probably a week after elections. I just rather to wait for elections, see who gets elected, and then play it accordingly. So that's how I'm looking to play that. And I think those will do minimum 200% gains on each of those play. We already did one on Disney. We did over 220% gains and we're looking to do it again. So, and we're looking for three more. So very phenomenal, big plays, but they have to set up. But Tesla support 253, what I'll be looking out for tomorrow is if we continue just kind of pushing up, I probably won't play it. We already got the shares. We already played the earnings. So there's no rush to play it. But what would be ideal is if we kind of get some slow down, a little bit of pull down, and then we catch that secondary run. Like you see the secondary run that continued in the direction of the earnings that's what you want over here right that's when we can load up on some swing calls and more shares and so forth that's what i'll be looking out for so that's the biggest thing i'll probably look out for tesla but if it kind of just continues going up maybe i'll play it maybe not but the pull down the balance out for the call options to get a little bit cheaper because right now they're very high in premium would be the best option so we'll kind of see but so far the only thing i would kind of put on here is that support right around 253 it also has, I would say it has a smaller resistance area, like around 263. We could put that on our chart too. I was kind of looking at it right now. So 263, we could watch that as well. So if that starts to break, then maybe it might not want to pull down yet, just yet. But we're looking like something like this, like the last earnings. That's what we want over here to really make it very strong and very optimal in that range. Okay, that would be like the best thing. Um, Meta stock. As support 564.60. I'm looking for put options on Meta stock to go down to about 550. I might get those put options tomorrow or Monday. We'll kind of see. They also have earnings Wednesday, October 23rd. Like I said, you have very big earnings next week, so be mindful of that. But that's pretty much it for Meta. Amazon stalled and also Google stalled. I'm waiting for earnings on both of those, which are next week on Tuesday and Thursday, I believe. I think Amazon Thursday and Google's Tuesday. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm waiting for those. Oh. AMC had a little push today, up about 3%. Overall, nothing to do with AMC. I'm going to be honest. GameStop, also nothing to do. It has to break 20-75 for me to be interested in it. And there's nothing to do on that range that it's in currently. So I just let it go. Let's go ahead and go over to DJT. So DJT had a smaller support around 33.25 that you can watch out for now. Remember I told y'all we want that price to go to resistance around $37. And you want that pull down, right? You want that pull down from resistance. A1 analyst always. So Came up close to resistance and you got that pull down to a support area and then you play the upside. So that's exactly what DJT is doing. If you don't believe me, go watch the video I said yesterday. It's literally doing it perfect. So now it's not a bad area. I was thinking about getting shares of DJT in this area. As long as we don't come back down and break this shorter term support at 30 to 25, then hopefully it continues to push up to about 40, which could be close to around a 20% gain. So say like I get in around $35. To 40% is about 
14 ish per se gain, which is not bad. So we'll kind of tell you if DJT wants to continue this push. But if it comes back down and start testing at 32 25, then it might not want to push just yet. Like this run here, it took about five days before it actually started having that secondary push. So we still have resistance at $37, by the way. But watch that smaller support. Bigger supports at $34.50. This is what, I mean, $30.45. $30 this is what you really don't want to break. Because if it breaks that, that's really not showing signs that it wants to go higher. But overall, that's what we're kind of watching out for on DJT in that range. Also, Funware. Big crash on Funware. Over 40% on Funware. Trump link Funware plunges 40% as CEO exits after one year. So that is why you're getting that huge crash. Now, this is why I said Funware is very vertical. You don't want to buy high prices. You want retracement because you don't want to get caught in this. This dropped over 40%, probably even more. What's the high? The high to the low is over 42% in a day. That is crazy, and that's not something you want to be in. So now that it is dropping, if the high was about 14 Now it's at $8. So now is the most important part on Funware. We have support at $7. I'm going to just round it up to about $7. You want to watch that. Now, you really don't want this support to break. So the biggest thing on Funware tomorrow is, does it continue this big sell-off? And does it break this support at $7? If it does, then the upside might be done with and it's probably not going to reach these highs anytime soon if it breaks that support level and it continues this big pour down. Okay, so that's the biggest thing to watch out for Funware tomorrow. Clove, uh, I feel like it's going down to the 350s, 340s. It's just keep testing that shorter term support. It kind of hit it all day today. If you go to the five minute chart, see how many times it hit the support all day today? It just seems weaker. So right now, as looking at Clove, I'm just expecting lower prices. I'm expecting it to go somewhere down in this range here. Look at how price is. Unless it starts pushing up out of nowhere, it just seemed like it wants to go down here, which is okay, right? The last time Clove, it had a drop of about 35%, and then it started going up. Right now, from the high, you're really only down about 19%. So it can continue dropping all the way down to close to $3 and still have time to go back up and continue the movement that it's been doing. So Overall, it is breaking supports, but it's not like it's just turning bearish just yet. So I would assume it's going down to 340. So if I wanted to get shares, I would wait until it got down in there in that area because you probably get it at like cheaper pricing um, that I see for right now on Clove stock. Let's go ahead and go over to gold. So gold hit the support level today, 2010, had rejection off of that. That's pretty good. If we go down to our five minute chart, you can see nice pull down. Tried to go below it, came back, touched support, tried to go below it, came back past support. So support held price in this range. You do, you really didn't get any bigger. See how this heavy drop stopped right around the support? That is what you want. And gold is still bullish in my eyes, but you need this pull down to kind of balance out pricing. Because if you look at GLD, GLD is pretty high. GLD barely pulled down today. Like it didn't pull down as much as Barack Gold did. So you need some pull down in this range. So gold is still bullish in my eyes. And that is still the support at 2010 on gold also for Barack Gold. So nothing really has changed. Same support, still bullish. If it breaks the support tomorrow, we'll just add a new support. There's one more major support that if that breaks, then gold turns bearish. But for right now, we're still kind of bullish on gold. Still looking for higher prices. OXY. So OXY is still dropping a little softer. That's what we want. I do believe OXY is going down to about $48. This is for oil, by the way. Oil is bearish in my eyes. And then you have support around $50. So I am looking for puts to go down. I don't know exactly what I want to get them, probably sometime next week. But once it breaks that support, I'll probably um, go ahead and load up on put options for OXY to go down to 48 because I am bearish on oil. And so far, it's doing exactly what we want. It had to push up, showed resistance, and now it's on that right curve going down, trying to come back down to around 48, which would be nice, right? We've been calling oil bearish for like months for now, and it is actually still bearish. So I like that. Palantir, we still got the crypto section comment section to go over we still got some other names to go over we'll go over the cannabis sector as well in here we'll go over the nuclear sector also and some other stocks that are kind of very low the makeup sector as well then the bond market as well so we got a lot of stuff to go over so make sure you stay tuned i know it's right around 19 minutes i'm gonna try to keep it right at 30 um palantir palantir hit the buying level remember i wanted below 42 that was the time to buy. That's what I wanted. And now it's pushing up. You got resistance around 44. But how I'm looking to play Palantir is if it breaks 44, 
then I'll probably do like shorter term call options to break 45 and I'll leave it at that. There's not enough gains for the shares because 45 is all time high. So once we break that, it'll be like uncharted territory. So that's how I'm probably looking to play it. I'll just play like shorter term calls and I'll just leave it at that. Um, still same levels for Palantir. And that's pretty much it on the Palantir front. So far, still booming up. Hit resistance today. Trying to show some selling pressure. So we will be looking for that pull down. Let's kind of take some of these levels off. The biggest thing on SoFi is they have earnings next week on Tuesday. So I do want to play the upside on Palantir, but I'm kind of just waiting for earnings. It's literally in, on Tuesday. So I'll just wait for that, depending on what they do for earnings. I also might play the earnings. We'll see. Hopefully they come out with some surprise. They have a decent move. But that's what I'm kind of looking out for SoFi right now. And I would say waiting for the earnings to see what earnings does and I might play the earnings, will be more beneficial because let's say you buy heavy shares here or heavy puts and it does the opposite, you'll lose a lot of money in just a couple of days. So might as well just put that on the sideline and then play it accordingly, then not try to rush. So I'll still leave resistance right around $11 for now. And I'll still leave support, the bigger support, right around like $9.95. And we'll leave it right there for SoFi and see how I want to move at that range. Nuclear. LTBR is still dropping and it hit support perfect today at 585. If you look at the five minute chart, look at that. Support hit perfect, support hit perfect, support hit perfect. Now, that is just a beautiful sight to see. Don't forget, make sure you guys join in on the Halloween sale to get access to the Discord where you get to see all the buys and sales of private live streams every day the market's open. Clear direction, top plays I'm looking out for, stocks we're looking to buy, but also really learning how to get out of that retail and start turning to a monster to actually build yourself to become consistent, actually a good trader and have focus in the market. So make sure you guys join with the Halloween sale. Elite, elite year, lifetime memberships that comes with personal training. And personal training is also going to switch over, but you just pay once anyway. You'll get that for free. Then willknowledge77june.com. Make sure you email me if you have any questions. Make sure you take advantage of the Halloween sale. It ends in about five days or on Wednesday, whenever Halloween is. Okay, so make sure you do that. But um, LTBR had a nice run. That's cool. We don't chase price. We want pull down. And from that pull down, we want support to hold. We have not had that support yet. Finally hit today at 585. So now you need to see the biggest thing with LTBR tomorrow is do we push off the support or do we break it? If we break it, that's just showing more signs that it does not want to go up. So I cannot buy it. Right. That's what I mean by being focused. You have something to look out for and you know exactly what you want price to do to notify yourself. Is that going to be a buy or not? So 585, see how that acts tomorrow, see if it holds or see if it breaks. And now kind of let us know if LTBR is going to be a buy or not. NNE is also dropping. NNE has a support. This is uh, nano nuclear energy, by the way. We watch support right around this area, about 1670. If that breaks, it might be done on the upside. So watch 1670 for now on NNE. So that'll be kind of crucial. If that breaks, I think the upside might be done. And I think they're doing a $36 million stock offering, too. That could bring them down a little bit even more. Let's check the cannabis sector. Cannabis sector, pretty stalled. You need, you still need bigger moves on the cannabis sector, like SNTL, uh, Tilray, Crime. They all still need very big moves to go to the upside. So cannabis sector is pretty stalled out right now. Um, for Enphase and the energy side, Enphase finally had its earnings. Uh, we did play Enphase. We got about 180%. So this week, we got about 700% totals on earnings plays. The team will tell y'all, and we played three. We played Enphase, Tesla, and UPS. I showed y'all the UPS ones. Team one, it was beautiful. But um, Enphase did drop. That's good. I want Enphase to actually drop below 70. So I don't think it's done yet. And even if it starts booming up to 90, 90 for Enphase is still very low. So I am looking for a nice swing on Enphase, but it's just not ready yet. And I'm, let me sit, let me check the other uh, energies. Yeah, FSLR is moving down. They have earnings next week, so be mindful of that. And also Sunrun's moving down as well. They have earnings in a, like a month, actually. So their earnings is pretty far. But Enphase was kind of like the leader. So Enphase, I wanted to drop below 70. I don't want to buy just yet. And I'm kind of just being patient for it to kind of kind of continue this earnings move and really start dropping more past 70, which would be more ideal and more where I kind of want to get in. Also, in our dividend account, remember I told you all about AT&T. Once AT&T breaks 1750, I was going to buy shares. Well, we did buy it, and it's almost hitting my target at $23. I don't think I'm – that was the whole reason I bought for the swing, and this is also in our dividend account. So we collected about two dividends, and we're also up close to 30% on our shares. So I don't think I'm going to sell any. I think I'm going to just hold the AT&T. I know I had questions on it. I'll probably just hold the AT&T. And let it rock out for now. Um, I might even do new positions on AT&T. But AT&T did very beautiful. If y'all saw that swing, 
that's in a dividend account. And also MO, I want to buy more of this. This is in a dividend account. We also have O'Reilly. O'Reilly is booming up. I think we got in around like 55 or something like that. So we're up a lot on that, over 20%. Or 57 something like that but our dividend accounts booming we also got like pepsi and so forth looking to buy more of those just kind of throwing that in the video but let's go ahead and go back so we looked we talked about energy let's talk about oh celsius so celsius has support at 29.65 it is very low but now i'm just trying to see when does a play present itself right a nice swing play i think that will come when celsius actually starts to turn bullish that's going to be the major thing you want to look out for Celsius. When does it turn bullish? So for now, I would say the first sign is when it starts breaking this resistance, which is 3425. So that's what you want to be watching out for right now on Celsius for a potential swing. Now, I know I go over a lot of stocks and a lot of sectors. That doesn't mean I'm looking to play every sector and every stock. It's to, so you can have a wide range of what I see on the market and different analysts and different sectors. Just in case somebody might like energy, somebody might like the cannabis sector. So you get a wide range right in one video but um so that's celsius pretty much support 29.65 their earnings is going to be very big on november 7th so we can really see what's going on with the company that's going to be big for celsius so i'll say that's probably the biggest thing i'll be looking out for is what they do for that earnings move and what their earnings say bond market still chill 9210 tlt support um it is in my buying range so i'm kind of just being patient last time i was patient um it ran up and then it came right back down lower prices so it's a good thing i was patient and i'm just being patient again i think bonds do very good in 2025 to 2026 2027 longer term years to go but yeah tlt that good price range looking about more pretty soon also tmf good price range looking about more of this pretty soon tmf minimum 200 dollars. that's over 200 percent gains in the next coming years so i'm just buying it as it's low then once it has its shine, once everybody starts talking about TLT and TMF, I'll already be in it and I'll just be enjoying my profits as it goes up. So this is one of the times I like to buy when there's pain. Nobody wants to buy it. Is it going back down? All it's going to do is crash. That's what I like to see in the bond market right now. So I'll be buying that. No problem. And yep, occurs. Oh, well, let's go over Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, shorter term, 68,700 resistance support, 62,990. Y'all know I want Bitcoin to break 72,100. Once it breaks that, that's when I believe the crypto cycle will begin. And that's all I'm really waiting out for. So I do want to buy a little more Ethereum. I'm just kind of trying to see what it wants to do at this area. Because right now it's very stalled. It's been stalled since the beginning of August. So like two months in a row, it hasn't really moved. So there's really no point of buying something that hasn't moved in two months. I'll just wait for a better direction. But Ethereum is something I want to buy. Resistance 2767 and support 2400. Watch those. But Bitcoin, once it breaks here, I think the whole crypto market will be on fire and the whole crypto market will be in bullish mode. So, a.k.a. of why I'm more focused on like Coinbase. Right. Coinbase was the number one I was focused on because it has a very high potential. So I'm looking to buy some more Coinbase. They have earnings next week on Wednesday, October 30th as well. So that's what I'm waiting out for. That's going to be big. And depending on what they do on earnings, crash or rocket up will let me know the next big moves on Coinbase. But I already have shares looking for it to go higher. Man, I got to sneeze. Um, MSTR. MSTR is booming. I think it could boom up past $300 in the next crypto cycle. So I'm in no rush, uh, if I'm being honest. I'm just being patient with it. Whenever a setup comes in, I'll probably start shares on it. But right now, I'm kind of just focused on Coinbase. Because MSTR is already at all-time highs, but Coinbase is nowhere near it. So it just presents more as gains. But um, October 30th, they have earnings, by the way. So watch out for that on MSTR and also Hoodstock. I'm really waiting to after earnings, which is October 30th. So Hoodstock waiting for earnings to make it as much simple as possible. Hut, I'm looking for a pull down. We had two red days, but it's not really pulling down. So I'm trying to see what I want to do at Hut. Maybe I'll buy shares tomorrow. I wish we had a little more pull down. If I bought shares around 1530, we're looking at about maybe a 15% gain. I was hoping it would really pull down some. So HUD, I'm just trying to see. I won't force it or anything like that. I'm just trying to see if it wants to pull down more than it kind of already is, which would be more ideal. Boeing, I'm looking for a big swing play, also big leaps play. Leaps will be after the elections, but shares I might buy before the elections. We'll see. But big shares play on Boeing. BABA is still crashing, like I told y'all. Let it crash. Let it fall. We already played it, so no rush. And the China stimulus was a news type of driven stock. I mean, so whenever you have a stock that has a, a move like this, you want to understand why it moved. Was it from news? Was it from earnings? Was it from the CEO saying something? So you can know if that move is going to last or not. 
this was purely off the China stimulus bill. So that's not going to last, right? That's why I told everybody. Everybody was like, should we buy Baba here? No, it already it is already up. Let it drop. I say you need a minimum of 10% drop. Hopefully you listen because now it's down over 18%. So it's still dropping. It has not even found support yet. So let it find support on Baba first. That's when it's going to be the time. So let me go over go your comments. I know it's right around 30 minutes. I said I would keep it here. So and phase went over DJT. Make sure you guys smash the like button and subscribe to me if you're new. Make sure you guys are joining the team as well. Use that Halloween sale while it's still live. PayPal. PayPal's still really stalled, though. I am looking to buy more PayPal. I'm just kind of being patient on it. They have earnings next week on Tuesday. Went over Funware. We went over SoFi. Moderna's just crashing. It hasn't found support, so I would probably stay away from Moderna for now until it actually shows signs that it wants to start pushing and turn bullish. So that's like the easiest thing. Just wait for it to turn bullish. Crypto sector, I'll add it in the next video. I didn't do a big crypto sector today because the video is kind of already long. And then Uber. Uber has earnings on October 31st. That will be big. So I'll probably say wait for earnings because you never know what's going to happen. Because right now, there's really not no play on uber per se and also uber is fairly high it's close to all-time high so that doesn't interest me either i'd rather get uh, uber at like paying prices than trying to play it at all-time high so i would probably wait till earnings thursday next week and then whatever happens to earnings play it accordingly and then kind of just make it easier like that we did have a lot of news today we don't have any news tomorrow by the way so we're purely getting earning season, so no news tomorrow. Make sure you guys don't forget to join the team. First in the description for the Halloween sale. And also follow me on Instagram, Without Knowledge. Make sure you run it up. Go watch the stories and so forth. I'm going to start posting the students' profits on the story. Go like some stuff. And always remember, no trick of to buy or sell anything. Just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see here in the video. Catch you guys on the next one.